Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Pass Gas. Today is Santa's Cold Bag Volume 2. We're taking your suggestions, uh, telling the stories that you want to hear. They're a little shorter this time. And also, we're looking at some big old hairy dogs at the end. Big hairy dogs. We're giving presents. We start things off with Joe uh, giving us a little gift exchange. We all gave gifts, okay? Yeah. And mine was very thoughtful. <laughs> yeah. Joe's is bad for us. Mine's good. <laughs> I looked in my backpack for stuff. Anyway, let's go. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Twas the night before break when through the garage, not an engine was revving, not even a Dodge. The stockies were hung by the mural with care in hopes that St. Enzo soon would be there. High and low car were nestled all snug in their bays while Zumi's workwear was put out on display. And Christina in her kerchief and Gavin in his cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out in the yard there arose such a clatter, Christina sprang from the studio to see what was the matter. A bag full of stories, some funny, some trite. Great, said Christina, I don't have to write. And that's what this is. Today on Past Gas, we're going to learn a little bit more about some different listener submitted stories and judge a whole lot of big dogs. <laughs> Finally, get some big dogs on this show. Yeah. It's not just a bunch of little dogs that Those suck. are real big dogs, not a euphemism for nope. something. Um, pictures of your large dogs. This is Santa's Cole Bag. We did Your Crummy Ideas, Volume 2. Yes! Fast Gas Podcast! It's about cars, it's not about ports! Big thank you to our sponsor this week, Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash gas, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash gas now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash gas. A big thank you to our sponsor this week, BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash gas today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash gas. Thank you, BetterHelp. We get a lot of requests for topics and mm -hmm. stories to cover on this show. Some of them are crazy yeah. some of them are not very good some of them are very good but they don't necessarily too short uh, yeah warrant nine pages of uh story so we're going to cover all of those yeah. in today's episode and we are going to rank your dogs yeah uh previously we had you guys send a bunch of little dogs and yeah. these jokers pretended like they liked them i like all i dogs. like little dogs i like you little dogs so what's, okay what what let's before we even get into the episode yeah. what's the deal with the little dogs who in your family growing up had the little dog you? that you Nobody. didn't like no, there's I've always something had big happened. dogs in my Something family. happened. No. What happened? No. My family is a big dog family. Something, there was maybe a, a chihuahua that yapped at you, nope. maybe bit you. Nah. That would be understandable because my aunt, no. this isn't she based had a on chihuahua trauma. This is not based on trauma. This is based Chucky. on personal preference. All right. Welcome to the show, everybody. Pass Gas, number one automotive show in the world. My name is Nolan Sykes, joined as always by my co-hosts. We got James Pumphrey over there with a big old candy cane. Ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> ho 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 and joe weber i want to give a big shout out to my dogs donner and blitz and scooby <laughs> what, what are the other ones names? dogs daughter donner, donner and blitz oh, there was, there was <laughs> i want to give a shout dogs out to my daughter. dog's daughter sure uh <laughs> mad cordova's daughter joni is very cute i want to give a shout out like to Jenny her Mitchell? maybe joni cordova Joni Cordova. Yeah, cool Joni name. Cordova. Cool That's name. a cool name. All right. Uh, yeah, and today's Santa's Cold Bag, one of my favorite episodes that we do. Oh, so fun. All the time. Yeah. We do it all the time. Oh, dang, dude. Are you wearing a, a TRD fleece? Whoa. Yeah, That's sick. This is the the Huff TRD racing uh, cold That's tight. Yeah. I just uh, saw a story about this woman that the only account that Microsoft Windows follows is uh -huh. this one woman. For some reason, uh -huh. and she doesn't know why, but every year they send her a new sweater, uh -huh. and this year it was like the grassy hills oh, oh. with like a little pointer clicker Weird. on it, and it what looked a, pretty sick. 
I would be so scared <laughs> <laughs> if my, I was the only person that Microsoft was following. And like to the point where it's like definitely not an accident. Yeah. No. Uh, and they're, they're sending, sending you they stuff. know her address. Yeah. yeah. They've they found she they've probably used, didn't yeah, tell they've them. used no. their uh abilities to find out her address and they're taunting her. <laughs> is the is the mouse at least the zipper on the zipper so it moves? No, around? it's off center, which kind of oh. bugs me. It should have been on the zipper, so I know. it looks like you're There's no zipper. The, uh, but the other the one that she got last year was clippy. Mm, and I was weird. like, that's kind of This is creepy. <laughs> And then next year, it's going to be like a list of her, all of the IP addresses that she visited. Yeah. Yeah. Her entire web history. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we're going to start off the show with a gift exchange. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know I you guys were so busy this year shooting this all this whole week. Well, yeah. This week was especially... We have to shoot more stuff after this. We're yeah. shooting a video right after this. Joe's directing it. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. You should tune into that. But for now... Every day of this week, I've been in two videos. I know. I've been in multiple things every day. It's been crazy. So uh, that's my excuse. For I got you guys some presents this year. I don't, don't, I don't want to make you feel bad about not getting me yeah. stuff. No, I got you something and I didn't forget. I got you both really good gifts that are thoughtful. I'm going to find something. I'll scrounge something out of my yeah. backpack. Well, right. first, James, I want to give you this because you gave me a Tim Allen uh, Hot Wheel uh, set a couple of years ago, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And it's still up on my wall. So I wanted to give you this. I know you like West Coast Choppers. Oh, dude, I do. Oh, my God. What? You got Paul Sr., Paul <laughs> Jr., and Mikey. <laughs> That's wow. insane. I probably Pez wouldn't dispensers. eat the candy in it because it's probably yeah, over it's probably 20 old. years old. This is great. Where'd this, you find that? Uh, it was actually in a shipment that a box that my parents sent me of my old stuff. So oh, nice. <laughs> you already had it. Yeah. That. All right. So on the back, <laughs> it's got their all the stars of uh, West Coast Choppers, and it's got their favorite bikes. And I'd love to share them with you guys. Okay. okay. So Paul Junior, uh, arguably the star of the show. Yeah. Paul Senior wouldn't say that. He's the one who throws the chair, right? Uh huh. He's one of the ones that throws the chair. I think they all take they turns. All turns. <laughs> no, they all took turns. Yeah. So Paul Jr.'s favorite bikes are the jet bike. Classic, yeah. Uh, yeah. The fire bike. I remember yeah. that. Classic. For the FDNY. Uh-huh. And the Black Widow. Oh, the Black Widow. The spider mm -hmm. one. That one is intricate. Hence the name. Uh, I love that one. Yeah. Paul Sr.'s favorite bike, just one. The POW MIA bike. Of course. Of course it is. I doubt he served, but... <laughs> He's of the generation who likes to act like they did. <laughs> uh, and then. <laughs> well, this probably came out around the Iraq war firing up, you know. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so. it's just like guys that look like this guy yeah. are like, you know what? Like, I have so much reverence for the armed forces. I practically served. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a valor jacker, but. <laughs> Valor Jacker. Uh, by all accounts, uh, since this show, the, Paul Senior has proven to be a huge piece of shit. <laughs> um, and then Mikey. I'll start beef with him. What if Paul Senior beat me up? <laughs> I bet he could. He's got motorcycles. Jesse strength. James hates Paul Senior. <laughs> Paul Senior. Uh, and then Mikey. Everybody loves Mikey. Mikey's yeah. favorite bikes are Mikey's bike <laughs> and. Okay. And the Mikey and Vinny bike. Dude, this is taking me back. I forgot about the Black Widow. That was on t-shirt. Like Widow this kid, sick. Mitch Maroney, wore an American Chopper t-shirt that Did had that Did they make on the Spider-Man bike for Will I, or for Wyclef? I think Do you remember was, that one? That might have been the Black Widow. Because it no. had spider webbing over the tank. Remember that? Oh. And it was like super sick. They couldn't call it the Spider-Man bike because that Probably was not. copyright infringement. That's a hilarious gift. That's <laughs> very funny. All right, yeah. Nolan, you ready for Ooh, yours? Uh, yeah. To Riley's dismay, that is going in our living room. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of look like Mikey. No, you don't. <laughs> With you short hair. <laughs> look but at that. they would use the same head they if you guys. Yeah. Yeah. They just they'd put a little mole. Change the hair. <laughs> they put a little mole and change the hair. That's exact. And maybe different totally, glasses. Right, sorry totally. about that. So, like I said before, maybe off camera, but both of your gifts are metal themed. That's right. You did say that. Motorcycles are metal. Yeah. Yep. What's I got that? you the corn hot sauce. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. Joe. <laughs> Should we dab it? <laughs> Corn here to slay hot sauce. Oh, my uh, God. By the hedonist. Yeah, Should this was a... Um, Should we dab it? Should we feast? Down some What's it so funny. 
<laughs> okay, it says on the back, Here to Slay is Hot Sauce is an ode to our Bakersfield, California roots with a <laughs> recipe featuring roasted corn, onion, and the best chipotle peppers marinated in adobo. Oh. A healthy splash of pineapple juice adds just enough sweetness to slay your taste buds. Perfect for meals on the road and at home. Bro, I do not want to be in a tour bus if someone's <laughs> sucking this Dude, down. Fieldy's like <laughs> spraying it all over his food. That it's, sucks. Yeah, slay. Dude. Slay queen. Here to slay, baby. That's well, so Well, it's just funny. Chipotle's, and it's got juice in it. We and should dab it. Juice. On some cake? Put it on my coat on your little nut, your little hand. <laughs> my little nut? <laughs> yeah, put it on your little nut. Here we go. A little dab on my finger. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was big. Oh, oh watch yeah, make sure you get on a yeah. mic, J- James. <laughs> no sound on that. Okay, ready? Ready. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Oh, I like it. Not too spicy. It's very good. It's very good. That's really good. Great flavor. Dang. Because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's like no, ass blaster and you're like, I don't know if I want to try corn. this. Who knew? That, that's <laughs> think, really good, actually. It's yeah. really good. You I can taste that. the corn in it. Yeah, you yeah. can. I'd love that on some chicken, some ribs. Dude. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yum. Wow. I'm looking forward to my salmon bowl. I'm going to throw that on there. what I nice. ordered for lunch. Yeah. Chicken Caesar salad. Probably not going to be a great combination. Would be but, great. Yeah. You can throw it on Joe, some Joe, thank chicken. you so much. Yeah. This is delicious. Happy holidays. Dude, that's good. And thank you for this, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I My gifts for you guys are culinary. Oh, nice. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Is it something you got in the kitchen? <laughs> no, I didn't get it in the kitchen. I got it in a kitchen. Um, <laughs> Can't wait. Guys, it's... I think most people don't get enough protein. (laughs) Okay. You should have at least 0.7 grams of protein for every gram of body or for every pound of body weight you have. Okay. So, I mean, is that per day? Yeah. That's hard to calculate. 23. No, 0.7. So, like, you should be having like almost 200 grams of protein every day. Whoa. Hmm. Yeah. You don't get nearly enough. So, I got you. Both. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so what Nolan, is that? I got you 26 grams of protein <laughs> in the form of safe tuna. catch yellowfin tuna. That's, Dude, that's actually more. That's so the 26 grams. That's for like four ounces. That's a five ounce, three and a half ounces. That's a five ounce can. So really, you're getting like 34 grams of protein. Wow. And it's really low calorie for a protein. So, and it's safe catch. So it's yeah. not. You know, there's no dolphins in there. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, Joe, I got you a chewy chocolate chip. That's 20 grams of protein. Whoa. Pure protein. Are That's you on like the Chris Hemsworth diet right Thank now or you. something? No, I'm just trying to get as much protein. The more protein, that you're supposed to get protein. Yeah. Because I don't want, I'm getting older and I don't want to lose muscle mass. I see. Yeah. That's more. So wow. you got to maintain you. muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn, the more calories you can eat. So. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, James. Yeah. Yep. That might be good with your hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, I probably would. Yeah. So um, Joe and I talked. We kind of, it's kind of a two part gift. <laughs> oh, right. Let's see what I can yeah. uh, for a part three. Oh, that's perfect. Are you trying to piggyback on my? <laughs> yeah, it's like a two part gift. We talked. It really kind of like that. Both parts are from both of us. It's just like it's kind of inconsequential who gave which half. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we decided, oh, we should get him some corn yeah. hot sauce and tuna. If you think about it, I didn't get you any protein this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Joe. Yeah. Your catchphrase. Keep it yeah. juiced. Keep it juiced. juiced. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to help you keep it juiced with this phone charger. Whoa! For your car. Oh, I yeah. do wow. need one of these. No, you don't. I do in my car. <laughs> well, Thank dude. you. Just in time. Oh, and it's, it's got USB C. Yeah. Wow. It does? I'll yeah. give it back. No. <laughs> <laughs> and nice, James, um, you know, yeah. notable figure. Uh-huh. Public figure. Thank gets you. Get stopped a lot on the street. Uh-huh. People might ask for an autograph. Uh-huh. What wow. better than a M- Milwaukee brand? Whoa! Milwaukee, that's an expensive that's thing. A nice one. There you go. It works the same as the DeWalt, but and it's, it's more almost expensive. as good as Joe's gift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, almost as good. That's true. I can fit it in here. There you go. Yeah. I carry both of them in the same case. All right. Well, thank you, Nolan, for my present. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Joe. I don't feel like an asshole at all. <laughs> we got a cake on the desk right now it's for been our listeners. It's been for listen- two hours. It's been out. We put it out a little soon, I think. But this is our caked up dump truck cake. Yeah. Here. Let's spruce it up. Oh, Let's spruce so, it up. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, I'm reading the nutrition fact. <laughs> That's yeah. going to melt all over yeah, all of our computers, Joe. That's way too much. Uh, the I'm reading the nutrition facts on the Pez. <laughs> uh-huh. And Again, you can don't eat, eat that candy. <laughs> you can eat eight sleeves of Pez. <laughs> Same amount of sugar as, as one. one orange Fago. Hey, wow. unofficial. Fago, unofficial sponsor. beverage sponsor of the Pascast podcast. I technically have a meal right here. You do? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. What a sad Dude, that's a vagabond life. meal if I've ever seen one. Dude, this is something I would have eaten. I would have eaten this in quarantine for sure. <laughs> 100%. You could hop a train right off after this filming and sustain yourself for at least a day. That's a whole ass meal right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay that was really fun actually uh wow 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 well we got a bunch of stories here i i'm so i'm kind of scrolling through and these little titles here they're great so i can't wait to get into it let's uh let's do it this one our first story is a suggestion excuse me from listener leo quote Greetings from the land of tea and the queen. You should do an episode about the Mongol Rally, a huge road trip that takes place every year and is organized to raise funds for charity. You start in France and then drive all the way out to Mongolia and back again. What? I would do that. Most of the information I have on it is from my grandpa who took part in it in a Mitsubishi cult to raise money for hospices. Whoa. I won't be offended if you guys don't make an episode based on my suggestion, as I suspect you receive hundreds of ideas weekly, but I thought it might be cool if you did from a British chap. Nice. British. He spelled it very phonetically too. Yeah. British. What a bo. What a bo. <laughs> All right. So here we go. The Mongol Rally is an event organized by a group called the Adventurists, whose whole thing is quote making the world less boring. That's way better than the racists. <laughs> They believe that because the, quote, entire surface of the earth has been scanned by satellites, their duty is to make that sanitized version of the world more chaotic. They offer five different races. They got the monkey run, the rickshaw run, poles of inconvenience rally, the Kraken cup, and what we're going to look into today, the Mongol rally. The Mongol rally is the adventurous biggest race and first took place in 2004, which had six teams entered, four of whom completed it. The second year in 2005 had 43 teams enter and 18 of those teams arrived intact. And there it only grew. On average, 250 to 300 teams enter the race. And this year it was canceled, likely due to the war between Russia and Ukraine. Although this remains unconfirmed on the website, but I think that's a pretty... Yeah, that uh, would ruin it for me at least. The rules are, as promised, chaotic. You can only take a small vehicle of one liter or less. If it's a motorcycle, it must be a 125 cc bike or less. If you drive a car, it has to be a quote, shit box. According to the website, it's no fun if it's too easy. If you want easy, go for a spa weekend. Oh yeah, you puff. Yeah. At the end of the race, the vehicle you drive must be driven or shipped back to where it came from. So you can't just like leave it in Mongolia. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like- That's a good call. Yeah. Limiting it to one liter really limits your Mm -hmm. selection of cars. There's probably like, what, 30 30 different cars that are under a liter? All the K cars. Oh, K cars for sure. I think it's probably a little easier to find one in Europe. Yes, that's true. Yeah. The second rule- One liter though. Wow. Yeah. That's That's little. That's little. I mean, yeah. Kevin, can you pull up a picture of a one liter car? Gavin Shore listeners and our viewers. <laughs> I'm trying to be more like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Gavin. Wow. 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 One liter, huh? It's so small. That's like <laughs> this. <laughs> it's like this Fago delicious cotton candy bottle. It's one liter. I mean, think about that. It's phenomenal. Wow. So what Have you seen, seen one liter? Is there's a car that's run off of Fago? <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's what I want to see. <laughs> the He's sec- hunched over too, right? He's always like this in his clips. So what you're saying, you're, what you're telling in, me, dude, Ben dialed Shapiro? Dialed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the second rule is that there's no backup or support by the race organizers. The idea behind this is that if it's not dangerous, it's not an adventure. And the final rule, you must raise a minimum of 500 pounds for the official rally charity Cool Earth, an organization that works alongside indigenous villages to halt rainforest destruction. You can choose a different charity, but that's the one they've got for you, okay? 
It's kind of cool. Like that, that is cool. The race prides itself on its on route, meaning there's a starting point and an ending point, and the in between is up to the teams. I just realized that like you're also kind of destroying the earth by doing this rally, right? Uh, Especially if you're doing an on route. Which means you're probably going off road. Uh, you're probably on highways and stuff, though. Okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to poo-poo this. Yeah, the adventurists have said that quote past teams have traveled as far south as Iran and Pakistan. Others have ventured into the Arctic Circle. The starting line is in Prague, and the finish line is in Ulan Ude, just outside Mongolia. So all teams drive across the country, and typically the teams head to Moscow, Kiev, or Istanbul, then make their way to Uzbekistan before going north to Mongolia. The total distance is around eight to 10,000 miles. So far. That's a yeah, lot. That's dude. so far. And In a little shitbox? Yeah. That's crazy. And most teams take three to four weeks to finish. I would do that with one of you. One of us. And a big yeah. dog. And, a big, no. or, and like a baby <laughs> well, just we find a, along the way. In a one liter car, I wouldn't yeah. want to ride with both of you. That's what you and McGregor did in Mongolia. Found a baby? The the long way round, he was on a motorcycle trip for this show, and he ended up uh, adopting an orphan, which is now his daughter. Whoa. What yeah. Way? That's crazy. As you can imagine, as the rally has grown in popularity, Joe, accidents have become more likely, and many have required hospital treatment. During the 2010 rally, a British participant died in a road accident between Iran and Turkmenistan. The entry fee for the rally is 795 pounds per vehicle with a max of four people per team. And for motorbikes, it's only 375 pounds. And for that, you get an entry to the rally, an invitation to the launch party, yeah, a European-style pit stop party, mm. a giant party at the end, and a t-shirt and official Mongol rally patch. And the of course, a European-style pit stop party. It's got like I think we call it something different over here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination. Uh, and of course, stories, quote, so f excellent, your friends will be in awe of you for decades to come. The only celebrity Christina found a record of participating was Jack Osborne in 2007. Wow. Yeah. The way that this is like written, like the way the rules are like written. Yeah is like a certain type of car enthusiast yeah. that I do not want to spend any time yeah. with. It's like, oh, you got to have a shit box. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you got to you get go to the spa. Mm -hmm. Story so f excellent. That is a little, uh, it's, it's a, like, that's a little. So you're going to have stories for every Cars and yeah. Coffee for the next 10 years. Yeah. It's like Gen X-y. Yeah. It's, yeah, Me for sure. So. I bought the best poverty spec shit box I could find. <laughs> yeah. It only has one turbo. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's the Mongol rally. Thank that you is the very Mongol much. Rally. Nice. Uh, Leo. Uh, Leo. Thank Leo. you, Leo. Uh, thank you, Leo. Thank you, Leo. Now I know about that. Big thanks to Pro Eagle for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. If you're an off-roading enthusiast or just hit a curb every once in a while, you've got to check out Pro Eagle. Pro Eagle is a brand born from off-road racing, offering off-road jacks and accessories that are tried, tested, and trusted by the best in the business. Pro Eagle is not just a manufacturer, but an industry pioneer. Did you know they invented the off-road jack back in 2013? That's right, they were the first to market, and they've been lifting the off-road community to new heights ever since. They even won best new off-road product at SEMA. But Pro Eagle doesn't just sell jacks. They offer a full line of accessories such as mounts, weather covers, lift adapters for Rivian, height extensions, and even a jack lock that will turn your jack into a safe jack stand. As someone who's done a minor bit of off-roading, I really put a lot of trust in jacks, and Pro Eagle jacks, I can trust them because all these pro teams use them. Offering a model for every use, from those smaller than a thermos to jacks made to lift big diesel trucks. Pro Eagle has the perfect off-road jack for you. Plus, you get peace of mind with your purchase, thanks to Pro Eagle's industry-leading two-year warranty. Go to ProEagle.com and use code DONUT for 15% off your order. That's 15% off ProEagle.com with code DONUT. Thanks, Pro Eagle. 
Big thank you to Subaru for sponsoring this episode. For anyone who believes that life is about the journey, not the destination, discover the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Adventure is a big part of an active lifestyle, but sometimes you gotta push it to the edge. The Subaru Crosstrek has always appealed to the adventure seekers with its legendary standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. But now, the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness goes even further. An enhanced dual-function X-Mode combined with 9.3 inches of ground clearance gives increased capability. Tough new off-road wheels with all-terrain tires designed for even more daunting trails. This trusty Subaru is built to take you to the limit, and yet its retuned standard eyesight driver assist technology is there to watch over you. Bold accent colors and new rugged exterior houses its equally durable water-repellent StarTech seats in a surprisingly spacious cabin. When I saw Subaru first introduce their wilderness line, I was like, when are they gonna do the Crosstrek? And now since it's been revealed, dude, this thing looks dope. Give it a look. This thing is super versatile and capable. It's at home, on the road, or out in the bush, helping you with your camping trip. The wilderness is the top of the Crosstrek range. You're not gonna be able to buy a more capable Crosstrek from the dealer. You gotta go with the wilderness. Discover the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness, the newest member of Subaru's wilderness family. Adventure on the edge. Learn more at Subaru.com. EyeSight is a driver assist system that may not operate optimally under all driving conditions. The driver is responsible for safe and attentive driving. System effectiveness depends on many factors. See your owner's manual. All right. Next up, we got the Stig. What's hey. up, Wink Wink Nation? Fellow Wisconsinite here. I love the show, and thank you for making me look like an idiot at work when I burst into laughter. You're welcome. You're welcome. I think you guys would do great justice to an episode on the Stig and how he's influenced the gold standard of speed testing in Europe and America. All right. Sincerely, Brock the Danger Sanger. Nice. Is that Brock supposed Sanger. to be Brock the Danger Sanger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Stig is, of course, okay, the guy from Top Gear. I've actually worked with him. Really? Yeah, Ben Collins. Hmm. So, so for those listeners who don't know, the Stig is the uh, quote-unquote anonymous race car driver who's been on Top Gear since 2002. If you want to know more about Top Gear or... Uh, more specifically, host Jeremy Clarkson. Check out one episode 150 of this show. Um, so since 2002, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's written in Wisconsin. Oh yeah. <laughs> so since 2002, we're not Irish. <laughs> there have been three official Stigs with various others making cameo appearances. The nickname was invented. By none other than James's dad, Jeremy Clarkson, after his days at Repton School, where new students were always called Stig. Hmm. That's However, probably some like racist reference. Probably. <laughs> probably. Most likely, yeah. However, Clarkson and producing partner Andy Willman originally pitched the driver as the Gimp, <laughs> set to wear a racing outfit patterned after a bondage suit until the first Stig. XF1 driver Perry McCarthy refused to play along. Hmm. That's kind of funny, actually. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not not funny. No. Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. No. He's, he's not not my hero. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. She just comes from the same generation as our dads. <laughs> <laughs> the Stig appeared in the very first episode of the rebooted Top Gear. Jeremy Clarkson introduced him, quote... Now, we call this thing the Stig, okay? We don't know its name. We don't really know its name. No one knows its name. And we don't want to know. Because it's a racing driver, and racing drivers have tiny little brains, and therefore worthless opinions, and they're very dull. Doctors actually call it Manzel Syndrome. <laughs> its job is simply to go out there and drive fast. Well, it's crazy that race car driver didn't want to work with him. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> the first Stig wore all black and was portrayed by the aforementioned Perry McCarthy, who was eventually killed off in the third season after revealing his identity in the second edition of his book, Flat Out, Flat Broke, Formula One, The Hard Way. <laughs> but who is Perry McCarthy? Well, the Black Stig was born in East London in 1961, and unlike other F1 drivers, didn't get his start in kart racing. Hmm. Instead, he funded his early career by working on oil rigs Whoa. while racing in Formula Ford, Formula 3, and eventually F3000 before he tested 
for the Footwork Formula One team in 1991. He was signed the following year to the infamously bad Andrea Moda team, oh, yeah. who we talked about in episode 100, F1's most spectacular single season flops. According to McCarthy, his shoe salesman turned team owner Andrea Sassetti refused to allow him to practice for more than a few laps before a Grand Prix, which led to his failure to qualify for a single one. Jeez. Out of the 10 entries that season, McCarthy did not start once. Despite his misfortunes with Andrea Moda, McCarthy tested for both Williams and Benetton in the 1990s, but quickly went back to sports car racing. He also had five appearances driving at Le Mans between 96 and 2003. And as we mentioned, in 2002, he became the original Stig for Top Gear. His job was to drive fast cars around the test track and teach guest stars how to drive the Suzuki Liana for star in a reasonably priced car segments. His on-screen death occurred when he drove the team's modified Jaguar XJS off the deck of the HMS Invincible, and only a single glove was ever found. Until 2009, when a low-budget BBC-produced video revealed that the Black Stick survived to steal a man's frisbee off a beach. Oof, that is British humor. Yeah. <laughs> That's seven years. <laughs> Boy, that gimp's got a frisbee, isn't it? Yeah. He stole my flying disc. <laughs> then came the white Stig, who is perhaps best known to fans of the show. This new Stig, played by driver Ben Collins from 2003 until 2010, appeared after a tribute to the OG Stig. He received a pair of white coveralls and helmet and a role that went beyond just the power lap segment. Though he also never spoke, he was frequently and sometimes literally carted around with the Top Gear presenters for various other segments. For do you example, guys remember that that prank that I wanted to do for a while? No. Where it's like so, uh, someone crossing the street and then we have like a uh, stunt driver like hit them as they're crossing the street uh -huh. and then like quickly switch them out or something. And then the same person in all white like hoisted up by a crane starts floating up. Oh, it's like, like an, an angel. angel. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, what? Why didn't Did we ever do that? I don't know. It's such a good idea. But the <laughs> yeah. crane is like, oh, you can't really see the crane. Yeah. Yeah. We I should mean, do I'll that. put it on the pitch board. Yeah, we'll, let's put it on the yeah. pitch board. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pranks, we shot a thing for Ford way back in the day, and Ben Collins was in it with me. And like the bit was like, I was picking up the Stig to like drive him to set. I was like a PA. And, uh, that was like what the commercial was. And so like Ben Collins and I were together all day and like he, it was in the new Ford Fusion and uh, he like turned on my seat warmer, I guess. <laughs> and like I got in the car and it was like not a hot day. I got in the car and like almost immediately he was like, hey, James, how's your seat feel? <laughs> and I was like, what? And like, I looked down and I was like, oh, you turned my seat warmer on. He's like, oh. Was like, Cause that was a bit they did on, uh, the grand tour. Oh yeah. They, they would like always do it yeah. without, but they, they were like on the road for hours at a time. So they he were like, could not wait. That's so funny. He didn't wait long enough for I'll me bet to, you that seat's a little warm there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it like probably wasn't even hot yet. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Couldn't wait. So excited. So bit, happy dude. with himself. Great guy. <laughs> All right. So in the 10th season, he had to take public transport in the cross London race. In season Man. 11, he was smuggled into the Zandvoort racetrack for the final deciding challenge against a rival German TV show to drive in James May's place after the presenter was found bound and gagged inside a locker. The white stick also appeared in several of Clarkson's specials including a drive in a Porsche 911 GT3 against Sabine Schmitz in an Audi. Rest in peace. Ben Collins was born in Bristol in 1975, but spent the first 10 years of his life in California. Oh. He went back to hmm. England to study and began his racing career in 1994, competing in the 1995 season of Formula Vauxhall Jr. He went on to compete in British Formula 3, the American Indy Light Series, and finished second in the 2000 Masters of Formula 3 race at Zandvoort. Nice. Nice. He was a test driver for Ascari during the Ascari A10 development and also often found himself testing Formula 1 cars, though he never had a formal seat. So this guy can drive. 
Yeah. Uh, let's just say <laughs> this guy can drive. <laughs> Oh yeah, understatement. Uh, <laughs> maybe this guy can hold on. Yeah, yeah, meth checks out. This guy can drive. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, you used my gift. Great. I know it's uh, already getting used out of it. This one too. <laughs> In the years before his gig as the Stig, he raced for Team Ascari at Le Mans and finished 6th in the 2002 12 Hours of Sebring. He also worked as a precision driver in the film National Treasure Book of Secrets. Oh, where shit. he doubled for none other than Nicolas Cage, as well as in Quantum of Solace, where he doubled for Daniel Craig. Mm. Went on to work as a stunt driver in both Skyfall and Spectre. Skyfall is my favorite one. Good one. Is that the one where the uh, Aston Martin flips over a bunch? That's Casino Royale. Oh. Yeah. oh. He wasn't in that. <laughs> <laughs> ben Collins eventually left Top Gear in 2010 due to the rising tensions with the cast and crew after he revealed his identity in his book, The Man in the White Suit. Come on, Stiggs. Mm. Stop on, Stiggs. revealing your identity. I mean, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of being killed off, the host simply announced that their presenting team is like the band Genesis and could be replaced at any time. I mean, let's be honest. If we had like an anonymous, if we had a Stig, uh-huh. I'd also be pretty, I'd be pissed if yeah. they wrote a book and then revealed themselves. Also, the book is like named, Yeah, hey, it's me. Yeah. I'd be mugged off, as yeah, it were. Yeah. Is that a real saying? Mm-hmm. I think you'd be pretty mad, dude. It depends on the day, honestly. I'm a little inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> something I'm working on. The new Stig appeared in a very special way. He was discovered by the three hosts as a baby in the Middle East during the holiday Middle East oh, special. Yeah, little baby I bet Jesus. that wasn't problematic at all. No, these guys really kind <laughs> of push the boundaries for no reason. Na- nativity scene. Yeah. Please He's little that. baby Jesus. It quickly grew into an adult version of itself when it was brought back to England thanks to the accelerated growth of Stig's. This Stig is the current Stig who exists in the show, and no one knows who it is. There are also many, many rumors that the Stig is actually played by multiple people, something that seems highly likely given the versatility of the anonymous driver. I think it's Cher Leclerc. <laughs> do you? Is who? No. He no, doesn't have time not. for he that. probably wouldn't be allowed to do that. No. No. I mean, yeah, they had uh, Michael Schumacher as a Stig that one time. Yep. Uh, where he pulled off the helmet in the studio. Yeah, they, there's got to have tons, tons of, of sticks. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, just on. for like production, it just yeah. makes sense. Makes it's it not going to like easier. not shoot because the stick's yeah. not available. Yeah. And there's no way that they're like hiring him as salary. Like that's right. a day rate, dude. Yeah. Well, none of those guys. I mean, yeah. Uh, Do you know that there's multiple Chris fixes? No. There's four Chris fixes. <laughs> And they're each good at a corner of a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for that suggestion there, Brock. You got it. You got your Stig story there. Yeah. Hope you like it. Big thank you to our sponsor this week, Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your own online shop stage to the real life storefront stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. I don't sell anything. I'm just a guy on the internet, but I know Donut Media, we've used Shopify before. And let me tell you, it's working out great for us, all right? Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash gas, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash gas. Now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Okay. Shopify.com slash gas. Super easy. Thank you so much. Shopify. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's the holiday season. It's the end of the year. Lots of pressure here at work, making a lot of videos. You're probably going through the same thing. Got to get all those tasks done before the holidays. Man, it can really have an effect on you. Point is, this time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. 
Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. I think therapy is a great way to help you through those difficult situations. And it isn't just for those who have experienced major trauma. It's for everybody. And BetterHelp can help you do that. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give our sponsor BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. That's kind of a huge thing. BetterHelp is catered to you. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash past gas today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash past gas. Thank you very much. BetterHelp. Well, let's talk about another man in white. Oh, nice. Hey, you donut heads. James mentioned Catholicism a few times in a previous episode, and it gave me an idea for a new one. Stay prayed up. What is the story behind the Pope Mobile? Just thought that story would be interesting and provide a few good laughs. <laughs> anyway, thanks for providing me with loads of entertainment during my morning commutes to college. You guys have been my favorite podcast and YouTube channel for many years now. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Logan Dean. P.S. How's disc golf going? My, for my friend Cameron, who previously asked this question in the Fast and Furious series. You been playing? Uh, the last time I played was with you before you went to Seattle, where you played a lot of disc golf at that yeah. disc golf resort. We went to a, a, went to disc, a disc golf, golf resort? Yeah. It had, oh, my God. It was how a, like dorky. A, it was super dorky, dude. Yeah. But very fun. And uh, it was on an old golf course that had, you know, gone Ghosts. under. <laughs> so every every hole was like the longest hole I've ever played. Yeah, and we played two rounds that day, and I like could not lift my arm afterwards. Oh, yeah. uh, but it was very fun. They also had like a a pitch and putt course that was like par twos, and mm -hmm. I wonder why those aren't everywhere because it's so fun. Yeah, that's cool. So disc people, <laughs> there you go. Par twos. There's your disc golf. Also, way to brag about going to college. <laughs> <laughs> None Aside. of us went. <laughs> I did. Nolan, I mean, we. I went, but I didn't graduate. Yeah. Two of us flunked out. Yeah, did you graduate? Dude. I flunked out, and then I went back and graduated. You graduated? Yeah. It took me six years. Traitor. Traitor. Loser. <laughs> Aside from portable thrones carried by 12 footmen or gilded papal carriages, the first official Pope mobile was given to Pope Pius XI in nine. 1930. Oh, yeah. That is 11. Sorry. I'm, I thought it was nine. I don't know how to read. You dyslexic. That's why I went to college so I could read Roman numeral. Uh, this so car was in. <laughs> reading Roman numerals up until twenty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my cutoff. Uh, so this first Pope mobile was a Mercedes Benz Nurburg four hundred and sixty. Uh, pope Pius XI was the original car guy pope. Mm. He was the first to accept an automobile thanks to a relationship between Mercedes advertising director Robert Katzenstein and the German ambassador for the Vatican, Dr. Diego von Bergen. Whoa, sick name. Katzenstein reached out to Dr. von Bergen directly and was pleased to learn that Pope Pius XI was not only interested in the newfangled invention, but excited to receive it. Okay, it's 1930. It's not super newfangled. Yeah. Right? That'd be like saying getting like a Blu-ray player and being like, oh, I heard these, these yeah. VHS players, they're new. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't accept OnStar. Yeah, but yeah. now <laughs> we're, we progress, technology progresses exponentially faster than it did back then. Then why do phones kind of suck now? They're kind of flatlined. Because it doesn't need to do anything else. Dude, have Should. you seen that beer Give me app? something new. Huh? It looks like you're drinking a beer? Oh, uh, yeah. That's you're saying cool. that's well, not the future? Well, the past cool. 20 years no, I have been, been the fastest growth in technology. Millennials cool. have I'm been... I'm just trying to make a point. It's not that new of an invention right. at this point yeah, in the story. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. More, it's almost 40 years at that point. Yeah, it's like saying, that's like saying newfangled Woodstock 99. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this newfangled NEU metal. <laughs> I think in the grand scheme of things, though, like religion is slow to adopt new sure. practices. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, anyway, before 1929, the Pope was confined to the Vatican due to a dispute with the Italian government. So once the agreement was resolved, it was go time. The Nürburgring was especially designed for the Pope. It was a stretch model complete with silk carpeting, a throne chair, Whoa. and a dove embroidered into the lining of the roof as an homage to the papal carriages of the previous century. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
The throne was outfitted with buttons. Did you just come up with that? <laughs> dude, yeah, she's got bars. Dude, that's really good. You should, write, you should write that down, dude. Uh, the throne was outfitted with buttons used to communicate to the Pope's driver, signaling things like turn right <laughs> or sick. turn yeah. left faster or go home. He's go like, home. You could just tell me. <laughs> The Pope home. called the go home. <laughs> go, go home. Go home. The go driver, home. The driver go home. gets out of the car and Amy, walks home. Bad gorilla. <laughs> Amy, bad gorilla. <laughs> the Pope called the Nurburg quote a wonder of modern machinery, which solidified. Ah, it's a wonder of modern machinery. <laughs> Which solidified the future longstanding relationship between the church and Mercedes. Oh, God. One of the best partnerships, want. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> In the decades that followed, Mercedes continued to present the Pope with cars specifically designed for papal missions. About a fourth of the Pope mobiles were made by Mercedes Benz. Noise. However, the Nurburg wasn't the only car in Pius XI's collection. He also received a 1929 Fiat 525, an Isoda Francini Type 8, and a 1929 Graham Page Type 837, which carried Pope Pius out of the Vatican in more than 59 years. It was also the car of choice <laughs> to celebrate. I wish we had that on the cake. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at the cake. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, exactly what we said would happen is happening. Uh, it was also the car of choice to celebrate the Pope's 50th year as a priest, and it was the first Pope mobile to be painted black. Mm -hmm. oh. Around the same time, Pope Pius XI was also given a burgundy and gold Citroen Lictoria C6, a.k.a. the Lictoria Sex. The inside was designed to look like a Venetian-style drawing room from the 1700s oh and also had a large dove on the canopy. Love those doves. In 1960, Pope John Paul XXIII was given a Mercedes-Benz 300D. Unlike the Nurburg, this Pope mobile was equipped with a soft top over the back seats and removable back windows. Oh, that thing's sick. Handles were also provided on the partition between the front and back seats so that when the roof was down, the Pope could comfortably stand and see the crowds. I want those stand. All, yeah, all these have one chair. Like, you can't drive around and talk to your friends. <laughs> Do you think the Pope has just casual friends? I guess God is his friend. Yeah. So he's just, God doesn't need a chair in the Pope mobile? No. He's just sitting there talking to God. In 1965, Pope Paul VI was given a 21-foot-long uh, 64 Lincoln Continental. Oh. Hell yeah, to show for him around New York City during his visit. This is the first time a sitting pope traveled to the U.S. Oh, and to celebrate, true. he addressed... It took until 1965 for a pope to visit America? Wow. That's insane. That's a huge liability, like traveling yeah. on a boat or whatever, or yeah. on a plane. That's true, that's yeah. true. Uh, this was uh, this is the that. same car Kennedy got shot in. Yeah, uh, he addressed both the not United the same exact not one, the same, same model. model, same model. He addressed both the United Nations and performed mass at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Whoa, that same year. Oh, I wish I was there. <laughs> yeah. That would be sick, be dude. Cool. In that the would. '60s, yeah, with all those freaking New Yorkers. So many Catholics in New York. Yeah, being a Catholic, I would have loved to be there. <laughs> That same year, the Pope was given a new Mercedes, this time the 600 Pullman, the same car that Pablo Escobar had. Nice. That we mentioned in the last episode. And since the soft top roof of the 300D was so successful, this one had a similar design. However, the roof was raised three inches higher than the stock model to allow more headroom. Mm. So he could wear that miter. Oh, yeah. Mater? <laughs> no, miter? Toe mater. It was in the 1980s that the design of the Pope Mobile was forced to make a big change. On May 13th, 1981, Pope John Paul II was riding in his This is my Pope. He was riding this is my in his pope. 1973. Yeah. Pope my when I picture the Pope, this is my Pope. Yeah, when I think of the Pope, I think JP2. He was riding in his 1973 Fiat Campagnola in St. Peter's Square when he was shot in the stomach. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> left hand and right arm in an assassination attempt. Yeah, but you know what he did? Went and met with the dude and said, I have to give you. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Hmm. This is the Pope that uh, Sinead O'Connor ripped up the picture of on SNL. And then Joe Pesci taped together the shredded picture on it because he was the guest the next week. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know what, Sinead? This is why I think he is ripping up the picture. Really? Yeah. Somebody surprising has like a piece of that. Some comedy person who lives yeah. on the east side, I assume? No, no. Like oh. somebody who was involved with the show back oh. then. And they were like, I was a writer. Yeah. It was like uh, the voice of the comic dog guy or oh, something yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, something like that. He's like, yeah, I got a piece of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's kind of cool. Yeah. After the attempt on his life, John Paul II didn't travel outside of the country much, and yeah. the church began to alter the look of the Pope Mobiles to allow for high visibility yet high security. And the result was a 1979 FSC Star, an armored Pope Mobile that had a structure that sat on top of a flatbed truck. John Paul II first rode in it as a show of defiance against the Soviets through Victory Square in Poland. Mm. The Polish Solidarity Movement gained uh, popularity after his trip, and eventually communism fell. Mm. All thanks to this awesome truck. Yeah. Uh, one of the most famous Pope Mobiles this one's sick. is the 1980 Mercedes-Benz 230G, yes. baby. G. Whoa, standing dude. for G-Wagon. Did you own yeah. a Pope Mobile? Yep. Whoa. Dude, I would love to take this thing and fill it with fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like no one's ever done that to a Pope's back. That's uh, true. The like, tooth- well, I just have a shark back there. <laughs> or like a big octopus. Oh, that'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the 230G was off-road ready with a raised transparent compartment on the back. Can you imagine taking a sharp turn? And then just tips over and then there's a shark in the street. <laughs> the cupola was made of clear plastic and removable and after the assassination attempt was modified with bulletproof glazing. The design also included a special air conditioning system that kept the walls from fogging up, offering the dream combo of high visibility and high security. That is dream combo. Dang. John Paul II rode in many other Pope mobiles over the years, uh, including an 82 Range Rover, 82 Leyland Constructor. This thing weighed 24 tons and had a six-cylinder diesel engine oh that God. put out a measly 154 horsepower. He rode in a 82 Seat Panda, um, which a was panda? Small, yeah, small enough to fit into soccer stadiums. Wait, yeah, I remember this. This is one yeah. of the one that I think of. Uh, there's an 84 GMC Sierra, baby, an 88 yeah, Peugeot 504. Yeah, the Panda's the Pope Mobile. I love this thing. Oh, the Panda Dude, is cool. Pope Mobiles are sick. And, of course, there's a whole slew of Mercedes. The 1985 Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL was sent to replace his 1965 limousine and outfitted with an extra-long sunroof and electric platforms in the floor that would raise the Pope up. <laughs> yeah. Like Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> then, in 1988... John Paul II visited the Ferrari factory in Marinello, so you know he took a ride in a Ferrari convertible, the Mondial. He just stands in every car. <laughs> yeah, he loves like, it. Dude, you know how important you are? Like, you can't fall out of cars. Nah, I'm going to teen a little fat. He does a handstand on the top of a van. I love it in Russia. Dude, I, have, teen a little fat. I have such a funny story about that. We were, my friend Chris Berge, we would like, do sleepovers in his basement and Hell yeah, dude. one night uh this kid teddy frown came over right. and teddy <laughs> frown <laughs> and cheer up and we watched teen wolf and we thought that scene was so funny that we were like teen wolfing <laughs> and he he like did a headstand and then I, like fell over and rolled into the wall and hit it so hard that this like kitschy sheet metal sun fell off the wall oh, no. and stabbed him in the toe <laughs> <laughs> and he just, it just like stuck in his toe we're like what do we do <laughs> mom's gonna be so pissed that we're yeah. teen down here dude yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah. teddy frown like, does he teddy need a tetanus frown. shot and it was like one in the morning and we're like we're not gonna get him a tetanus <laughs> shot yeah you get Cross your fingers, we'll man. We'll see how this pans out. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Later, the only white Ferrari Enzo ever made, the 2005 Ferrari Enzo, was given to John Paul II, but he politely declined it after suggesting that it be sold for charity. It went for $1 million, with proceeds going to the victims of the 2004 Indonesian tsunami. Oh, nice. that is nice. Back at Mercedes, the Pope also has a 1997 Mercedes-Benz S-Class convertible, a 2002 ML340, and a 2007 G-Wagon. When Pope Francis took over the papacy, he accepted a new Mercedes M-Class Pope mobile, but quickly started collecting less ostentatious vehicles. Francis, he's ridden around in a 2014 <laughs> Hyundai Santa Fe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a 2014 Jeepney. A 2015 Isuzu D-Max, 
There's a Kia Sedona in there, Jeep Wrangler, 2015 Fiat 500L, and apparently drives himself around the Vatican in a 1984 Renault 4 with more Whoa, than 180,000 like miles on it. Whoa, Two dude. Escobar connections. Wow. The I guess Vatican that, wow. is like two blocks. It's pretty small. It's a little tiny place, but lots of money in there. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's, that was fun. There's boatmobiles in the Peterson uh, vault. So if you take a vault tour, you can yeah. see a number of boatmobiles. And one dictator's car as well. Two one dictators. dictators. All right. Uh, let's enough with this bull crap. Let's start about <laughs> what we really came to see. In our 200th episode, after realizing that I don't like 20-pound dogs, <laughs> I asked you guys to send in your over 20-pound dogs. And once more, you guys really delivered, as you always do. We can always count on you guys, our wonderful audience, so to reliable. provide. Uh, our producers have once again put together a slideshow for oh, us. But this it. time, it's not a freaking joke, you guys. It's absolutely 100% <laughs> dead serious. These are okay. serious dogs. These are real. <laughs> okay. This is real. Okay. Ask Ass listeners have so many over 20-pound dogs that each slide has a few on it. Oh, boy. And uh, we're going to pick our favorite on each slide. All right, let's okay. do this. I have oh. decided, though, I am open to smaller dogs than previous. I want a little meatball. Yeah. Dude, I love a little meatball dog. Okay, slide one. We got Duke, 110 Duke. plus, loves wow. cross country oh, road trips. That's such a good boy. It's looking. Kevin's dog. Mm -hmm. Then we got Banjo, about 100 pounds. Those are some good Are we dogs. like, is this head to head? Yeah. Okay. Duke or Banjo, I love them both. I'm going to go, I'm going Duke on this one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got to go Duke. I'm yeah. a Banjo boy. Yeah, yeah we know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we got Bumblebee, 45 pounds. Named, named after Transformer. Love that. Uh, uh, we got a good Cage. Face. His name means shadow in Japanese. When I first got him, he used to hide in the corners. He was hiding in the shadows. Aww. Okay. Is I it like Cage Aww. or Kage? Oh, Kage. Kage. Both of them are so cute. Yeah, they're, they're both so cute. cute. I think I'm going with Bumblebee. I like this. Bumblebee's little face. Right, yeah. I like Kage. Cute dog. Next up, we got Dibs. Great name a for a dog. 200 pound Newfoundland. Yes, that is a great name for that dog. Christian. That yeah. Dibs, dude. Oh, my goodness. And then we got Layla. Whoa. Uh, she's a soccer star. Eats 40 pounds of food a week Whoa. from Bo. I don't know Dang. how many pounds of food I eat. That's a lot. Wow. Dude, I got to go with Dibs on this. Yeah, I, got, I like Layla. Look at that. Dibs is a great name. These though. are both. Look, all these dogs. Yeah. yeah. My heart is dude. melting looking yeah. at these this, things. This proves my point. These dogs are way better than those weird little <laughs> freak turds Dude, that you guys said nice. last time. I I love all dogs. I I'm do. a dibs really do. guy. Uh, gonna... Next up, no name given, but this dog is in a kayak. It weighs 115 pounds. Big lovable boy. Quote, we tried kayaking in a single person kayak and flipped it over. So yeah. this is me pushing the dog back to, to shore. Source Ben. He's got no Dude, name. That's so that's he's got sick. a life jacket on. Imagine like lifting Neither of these dogs got 115 names. pound dog back into a kayak that's over <laughs> yeah. That's That's got to be a big dude too. Mm -hmm. And up up next we got another uh, no name dog. Big looking dog. Kind of like yeah, a mastiff, mastiff looking thing. Yeah. Uh, called a sweet little princess at one point 135 pounds but is now wow. at 110. Lost oh, some good weight. for that's her. Good. It's a South African mastiff. She We're loves riding. with the mastiff. She loves riding in Jake's DC Integra and E28. I'm uh, go first one for me. The kayak dog. Yeah, kayak. I think just for the novelty of the picture, I got to agree. Yeah. yeah. All right, all these next dogs, every dog on this is the same listener, Ken, Whoa. which is your favorite note, all described as super fun and super dumb. I'm going to go with Greg, the Black Mastiff. I'm going to what are you thinking, Joe? Got George, I like kind of a George. Bernie, Bernie like Mountain oh, dog. George okay, seems yeah. really soft. And you know what? I'm going to go with Alan, the Alan, English Mastiff. Nice. Those are kind That's of all sick. of our personalities. Is that a C10 yeah. square body? Ooh, yeah. boy. All right, next up, we, we got Baru. Looks to be a St. Bernard. He's 151 pounds. And we got oh, Albert oh. next to another dog for scale. Yeah, Albert's 165 dog. pounds. Damn. Uh, I got to go with the St. Bernard. Love a Beethoven. I love both. There's a Beethoven things. in my neighborhood. That, <laughs> a Beethoven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That um he always he's huge and he gets up on the fence like this. Uh -huh. oh, oh, wow. that's adorable. And he says hi to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Love him. I like I'm going for blue. The Beethoven? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll go with Albert on this. Mm -hmm. Looks like They're a big both old, great. Big yeah. old Scooby Doo looking dog. Battle of the two dogs. Matching twins. Twins versus twins. We got Kimmy and Buddy at seventy and hundred five pounds. They're uh Aww. Like retrievers, yeah, retrievers, yeah, yeah. 
And then Lincoln and Ooh. Lucas, Ooh. they are collies. They're Lassie dogs. We got to yeah. go with Lincoln and Lucas. Those you are like the Lassie dogs? dogs? Yeah. They're cute. I, you don't see a lot of Lassie dogs. No. I like, I'd love to grab that fur when I went to <laughs> You that. know what I was thinking the other day? Lassie dogs and Dalmatians were very 90s. Yeah. yeah. You don't really see them a lot anymore. Yeah. I was thinking about, uh, our friend Andrew has a Dalmatian. Mm. It's super sick. A Dalmatian, I think they're like really energetic, but I would consider one. Next up, we got Bobby Banana. That dog looks mean as hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Norwegian elk hound. Oh, he's scary as we hell, got, dude. Can you imagine, like, <laughs> uh, you're like, okay, I got to go. Something's going on under my house. I got to climb under the house and check it out. <laughs> and you turn on the light and you see that? That is scary as <laughs> shit. scary yeah, as that's hell, That's like an dude. X-Files dog, yeah. dude. Yeah, dude. Then you got Kuis. Like, if that thing doesn't have any legs yeah. and just, it's like, just a, slithers through yeah. the holes. That's a scary looking dog. It's like a <laughs> Studio Ghibli monster. That's Daniel's dog. It's like Man. naming yeah. a dragon, like, little snuggler or something. Yeah. Bobby Banana? It looks like yeah, Bobby, Bobby Banana. Banana. Bobby Banana. Bobby Banana sounds like a morning radio show yeah. host. Yeah. Hey, uh, next up, we got Kuis, who's a big old Mastiff looking thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pit and Bull, Marshmallow. Maybe? Marshmallow's and Marshmallow. a great name for oh, yeah, Marshmallow. I got to go with Kuis. Yeah, Kuis That's Kuis like cool. Yeah. That's, hell. That's like Kuis is cool. Damn near perfect dog for That's me. a good looking yeah. dog, for yeah. sure. I like my dog to look like a bouncer. Next, we got <laughs> Beck, who's sixty pounds. Looks like a, a like a German Shepherd mixed with some sort of collie, like a fluffy yeah, German yeah, Shepherd. Some sort of yeah. herding breed, yeah. a working breed. Look, yeah. good looking dog. That is a handsome dog. So handsome. Next this up, is a whole yeah. slide of handsome. Yeah, boys. we got yeah. Shoshana, ninety pl- ninety pounds plus. Shoshana, another uh, sh- white Shepherd. Uh, Thank you, Gavin, and uh, Mister Rue. Who's I a think, cane corso and wire hair mix? You didn't read Shoshana's named after a character in Inglorious Bastards who killed Nazis. That's, That's cool. Yeah. That's and he's got a little pack. Or yeah. she's got a little pack. Shoshana's I'm gonna have to go, pretty cool. I'm gonna have to go with Shoshana on this one. Hell I yeah. I gotta go. Dude. Shoshana's cool as hell. Yeah. I love a cane corso. So Mr. Rue's very cute. Looks like my dog. Yeah. Very Beck's close. really cute. Beck's handsome, Beck's but I gotta handsome. go with Mr. Rue. Gotta represent for the cane. I'll of even it out. I'll go with Beck. Beck is very cute. All right. Mm-hmm. Next up, we got Brent's ex dog. Mm, did they leave you? <laughs> Look, I've been in situations where you really miss your ex's dogs. Yeah. Okay. I, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Then we got Bacon, a St. Uh, Beethoven. <laughs> Bacon is a Beethoven dog. And then Milton, a great Pyrenees wolfhound mix. He's afraid of being weighed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, in 10 cute. months, he was over 110 pounds. Good I Lord. like Milton. I like Milton, too. I'm I like all these boys, but I love fan. Milton. Love Milton. Great Even though too. Bacon is like really huge and cool. Picture with Connor's fiance for size ref. Well, Connor, we don't know how big your fiance yeah. is. Also, she's crouching down. Yeah. yeah. So, But congratulations on the engagement. Yeah, nice, dude. <laughs> uh, Doug, like the coin. Doge. Doge, okay, uh, Doge disqualified. Coin. Shay, <laughs> Shay is the winner. I love Shay. Uh, this is side tangent, but I couldn't sleep last night because I got a random, super FOMO feeling about missing out on the the Bitcoin. <laughs> that kept you up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, I really wish I would have bought some in 2012. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these are international dogs. Oh, love that. Aja and Oberon Whoa, are that's a big, weird-looking <laughs> <laughs> You can't even see their faces. What are these dogs outside of America doing? <laughs> these things look like primal. These things look like they live in the woods. These uh, are like medieval dogs. Yeah. Like from when they weren't fully formed. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pre-breed, just like. Yeah. I got to go with Ozzy, though. Yeah. Because these... I can see his face. Yeah. I like those weird <laughs> <laughs> look like mean puppets. <laughs> uh, they all win. <laughs> crash, rest in peace. RP crash, dude. J oh, Rembo, man. we're sorry. Uh, Bo, RP Bo. rest in peace. An Lucas, we're sorry. Winston, Winston's the dog. Rest in peace. Reese, we're sorry. Yeah, I love these dogs. I love these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard to. That's poor out a little Fago, yeah. official sponsor <laughs> of where, Past where, where Podcast. Where in this I mean, cup. figuratively. Oh. We're going to pour it into this cup. Same time. And then, okay. Oh. Nothing shows respect like pouring out a little bit of delicious 
cotton candy, genuine Fago. The so bluest is, drink on the market. This is to you, Crash, Bo, and Winston. <laughs> don't mix those. <laughs> it says don't mix. That, see, I. How much better are these dogs than all those little pieces of shit that yeah, we looked at last good. time? Right. Yeah. Right. I I take any dog that anybody sent in. I, I know, but like that. with every one of these dogs, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. That's true. All those other dogs are like, okay, cool. Wait, you're gonna flip. When you see Scully. Scully is, quote, 85 pounds heavier than our toddler. I know what? James would love her because she is more dangerous than a gun. And that's I a love that. That's a 150-pound toddler. That's, that's a, a yeah, yeah. And their toddler is also a record holder. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Zeus, who's 100 pounds. This is uh, like a German he shepherd. He like looking. Chewy. His uh, owner, Vlad, is blind, so uh, Zeus is a service dog. So he's uh, like an actual service dog. Yeah. 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 Oh, tied though. Yeah. These two, these two are tied. Yeah, they're tied. They're tied. Yeah, because this one's dangerous as a gun, and this one is literally a man's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Next up, we got Shiloh, another shepherd. Uh, oh, Jackson. Yeah, and then we got Jackson, who's a Great Dane. Oh, Marmaduke, dude. Yeah, I gotta love this Marmaduke. Jackson, gotta go with Jackson because when he stands on his back legs, he's six three, That's and he, nuts. which Good is how Lord. tall I am, Jeez. and he weighs one hundred and sixty four pounds which Probably is just cleaned up in high school basketball yeah, yeah. this oh, i love this dog <laughs> yeah uh jackson for me and then yeah. okay so biggest dog that was sent in yeah is dibs at 200, 200 pounds. pounds i think that was the only unanimous winner too we all loved him yeah, yeah we did dibs, i joked for the other one but yeah oh <laughs> i had a book about a, a newfoundland that a dog that went on an adventure in Whoa. canada and I forget what it's called, but I read it like three oh. times when I was a kid. If you guys remember a book. Uh, about a Newfoundland. About he a was new on a trip. Oh, no. He was like Lewis and Clark's dog. Whoa. Yeah, that's what the story was about. Oh, That's wow. cool. Yeah. Sacagawea. Maybe. All right. Well, it's been a hell of a year, you guys. It's been it so has. fun bringing you stories and Whew. bits and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for sending in your dogs. Thank you for listening. Uh, yeah. This has been a big year for uh, Pascast. Mm -hmm. We gained a lot of new listeners. Yeah, so thank you. thank you guys for spreading the word. Uh, a lot of those listeners came from direct links that you guys sent your friends through text. Yeah. So you telling people about this podcast really is the biggest way to spread word about it. Po mm -hmm. Podcasts are a very word of mouth uh, format, like more so than anything else. So For sure. we really, really appreciate it. Uh, it makes a huge difference to us. So, so if you have a friend or a relative or someone who you think might enjoy us talking about cars and a lot of other weird stuff, <laughs> uh, let them know. Uh, maybe too much weird stuff. Yeah, no. maybe too much weird stuff. And if you and if you want even more weird stuff, we actually are working on another podcast. We're gonna have two uh, podcasts available a week. This other one is called the Big Three, where we tackle. It's more timely, so like three big stories for, uh, in automotive news from mm -hmm. the week. So past gas is still gonna be history, and the Big Three will be the present. We'll be making history with a new one. Oh Whoa. damn, dude, that's sick. We so, love we love all the DMs and the comments in the YouTube sections and stuff too. So keep mm -hmm. on sending us those things and, yeah. and we love keep your an support. eye out for the big three in the same RSS feed as uh, past gas. Yeah, you won't even have to do anything. You won't even have to freaking do anything. You'll already dude. be subscribed. Yeah, it's not uh, even any more work. Then <laughs> a great year. I love you guys. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Keep it juiced. Hey, go tell someone that you appreciate them. And for 2023, this is Nolan, James, and Joe signing off. On behalf of Christina, our producer, and Gavin, our producer, and Nick, our cameraman. <laughs> Dupes. 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 <laughs> Thank you.